Hello, this is a video covering Module 2, Descriptive Statistics. So our first stop will be measures of location. As the name suggests, we talk about the location of one data value with regard to the entire data set. So measures of location or measures of relative standing or position those are used interchangeably depending on what textbook and depending on who you talk to. They describe the location of a data value relative to other values in a data set. So we are going to cover quartiles, percentiles, and z-scores are actually also measures of relative standing, but we'll discuss those in a later topic. So our first stop is going to be uh, quartiles. So measures of location, we'll first stop at quartiles, and they're measures of location that separate the data into quarters. So believe it or not, quartiles, quartiles split the data into quarters. They may or may not be a part of the data. So a quartile value may or may not be a data value in the data, cell, data set itself. So the first quartile, also referred to as Q1, separates the bottom 25% of sorted values from the top 75. So quartile one is just above the first 25% or the first quarter of the data. Quartile two, or the second quartile, also known as the median, which will be discussed in, the, in a little bit, it's the second quartile, Q2. It's the same as the median. It separates the bottom 50% of the sorted values from the top 50%. So your data have to be sorted to find quartiles. And the second quartile is right smack dab in the middle. And then the third quartile, or Q3 as it's notated as, it separates the bottom 75% of sorted values from the top 25%. For those of you that want a visual, so in your data set you'll always have a minimum value, you'll always have a maximum value, and then you have your quartile spaced out accordingly. So they break the data literally in the quarters, 25%, 25%, 25%, 25%. For a data set, the five number summary consists of the following five values. Minimum value, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, and the maximum value. So that's what a five number summary is. We'll actually practice finding the five number summary and the quartiles contained within it in just a moment, but just kind of as a little extracurricular discussion here. The inner quartile range, also called the IQR, is found by subtracting quartile 1 from quartile 3. That's called the inner quartile range. And what that's used for is to find outliers. An outlier is an observation that does not fit the rest of the data. It's kind of far away from the rest of the data. In this course, we will visually look at data to identify outliers, but the actual specific definition for finding an outlier is that a data value is an outlier if it is more than one and a half times the inner quartile range below the first quartile, or more than one and a half times the inner quartile range above the third quartile. So that's actually how you find the cutoff for <clears throat> outliers, both below and above the typical values of the data set. So that's actual. But like I said, in this course, we'll just look at data and we'll visually identify if something is an outlier or not. We're not going to get too technical with it. <clears throat> so the five number summary is actually used to make something called a box plot. Some of you might know this as the box and whisker plot because you have literally your, your kitty cat face right here, this box, and then you have the whiskers coming off from the side. So notice you have a number line, and it's marked with numbers, obviously, but you have your minimum data value, you have your maximum data value, you have your median, you have your first quartile, and you have your third quartile. And you literally put a line through the median and draw a box that connects quartile 1 with quartile 3. And draw the whiskers going out to the minimum and the maximum value. So a box plot or box and whisker diagram, it gives you a quick picture of the middle 50% of the data. That box is literally the middle 50% of the data. So how to construct a box plot by hand? Well, you need that five number summary. That's the most important. Then you make a number line. You construct a rectangle extending from quartile 1 to quartile 3. 
and draw a vertical line that goes through the median, or quartile 2. And then you draw your whiskers going out to the minimum and maximum values. So let's practice. Let's practice finding the five number summary and construct a box plot from the following data. So I have a whole entire data set. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight data values times two, 16 data values present. So my goal here is to find the five number summary. So what I need to do here is find the middle data value first. So I'm going to have to find, well, I'm just going to make a list. How about that? Minimum, quartile one, quartile two, remember that's the median, quartile three, and then the maximum value. <laughs> All right, so the data have to be sorted in order to find this five number summary. First off, we have a minimum value of five. We have a maximum value of 62. So make sure that data are sorted here. All right, so alternate. I have five, I have 62. I have six, I have 54. I have six, I have 40. I am finding the middle data value. I have nine, I have 36. I have 11, I have 26. 13, I have 26. And looky at what we have here. We have two values left in the middle. We have 16 and 18. Our median or our second quartile will be 16 plus 18 over two. So little calculation off to the side. 16 plus 18 over 2, find the average of 16 and 18, and that's just 17. So your second quartile is actually going to be 17. All right, so I'm going to place 17 here right between 16 and 18. Now what I have done here is below 17 is 50% of the data, and then above 17 or greater than 17 will be the other 50% of the data. I now need to look at the bottom 50%. I'll go ahead and circle it. I'll look at the bottom 50%. Those values that are below the median, look at the values below the median, below the second quartile, and you need to find the middle value. So I have, okay, cross out 5, cross out 16, 6, 13, 6, 11. And looky here, we have two values left in the middle, 7 and 9. Average them to get it's the same thing for finding the third quartile. Look at all the values above the median and start crossing out. So cross out one number from each side and you're left with two values in the middle, 36 and 37. So you have 36.5. That is my five number summary. Now you don't have to go through and by hand find the five number summary. You can actually use your Google Sheet spreadsheet document. You can use technology to help you find it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Google Sheet spreadsheet and I'm currently on the one variable stats tab or one var stats tab and I literally just type in my data in column A. I'll type in my 16 data values. You first want to highlight what's already there and click the delete key to get rid of it. Now let's type the data values. 5, push enter, 6, push enter, 6, enter, 7, enter, 9, enter, 11, enter, 13, enter, 16. Make sure you're pushing enter after you type in each data value. If you just push the down arrow key, the spreadsheet will not register the data value you typed in. So you have to push enter. Do not use the arrow keys to input the data. So I'm almost done typing everything in. You get a minimum value of five. Quartile one is eight. The median is 17. The quartile 3 is 36.5, and the maximum value is 62. There's even a calculation for the inner quartile range, but we're not really worried about that. So I have my five number summary. Does it match with what we received or what we found? It sure does. So now we're going to draw our box and whisker plot. <laughs> so we're going to draw our kitty cat. So make sure you first start off with your number line. I need to go all the way from 5 up to 62. <clears throat> so I'll do like 5, 10, 15, 20, 
30, 35, 40, 45. I'm going to label all the way till I get to 65. Cutting it close. All right, so you first want to plot, just put a dot at five, put a dot at somewhere around eight. Yeah, five and eight are really close. A uh, dot at 17, dot at 36.5, and a dot at 62. So if you take your first quartile and your third quartile, draw a rectangle that goes through them. Through your second quartile, or through your median, that's Q2, draw a line that goes through the median. And then you, from the rectangle, draw little lines or whiskers going out to your maximum value and your minimum value. And that's how you draw a box plot or a box and whisker plot or a box and whisker diagram, whatever you want to call it. <clears throat> so nice pretty picture right there for you. So once again, we can use technology to find the five number summary, and then we can create our box and whisker plot based on that summary. Our next stop will be percentiles, which divide a set of data into hundreds. You have minimum value, maximum value, and 99 percentiles in between. They may or may not be a part of the data set. So the median is the 50th percentile. Remember, that's the quartile two. The first and third quartiles are the 25th and 75th percentiles, respectively. And I already said there's 99 percentiles. They are represented using P capital P with the subscript. P sub 1 is the first percentile. P sub 2 is the second percentile. P sub 99 is the 99th percentile. So if you see, for instance, P sub 35, this is called the 35th percentile. It's the data value which has 35% of the data less than or equal to it. So that's the definition we are going to use for percentile in this course. So a piece of 35 means 30% of the data less than or equal to it. Some, some books don't do the equal to part. It just depends on who you're dealing with. So less than or equal to it. <laughs> if I ask you to calculate a percentile, we find first this little number i, which is called a locator. To find the case percentile, for instance, if I was trying to find the 50th percentile, I take 50, I divide by 100, and I multiply by n, or number of data values. So if i is an integer, so that's a nice, pretty whole number, then the percentile, the data value for the percentile, is the average of the data value in whatever your, your locator number is and the data value after it. So if i is, is equal to 10, if your locator is equal to 10, then you're going to average the 10th and the 11th data value. So let's put it in the real terms instead of all this notation. If i is not an integer, meaning it's a decimal, you round the value of i up, and the kth percentile is the data value in this position. So if you get something like 12.4, you're going to round that up. That means the percentile, that specific percentile, will be the 13th data value. That's what we're dealing with here. Do you ever wake up in the morning and just eat a big bowl of data? Well, you may, you may say no, but without realizing it, some of you may actually do so. So, for instance, if you look at cereal, cereal is full of data. For instance, I collected 40 boxes of Lucky Charms, and the number of marshmallows was counted in each. Because honestly, Lucky Charms, like that's the best part of the cereal the marshmallows. So if I get gypped on marshmallows, you're going to be hearing about it. So I collected these boxes, I counted how many marshmallows were in each, and I recorded the information in the table below. So out of all 40 boxes, I had as few as 121 marshmallows or as many as 166. Find the 42nd percentile. 
That's the data value which has 42% of the data less than or equal to it. So to find the 42nd percentile, what I have to do here <laughs> is first find my locator. Remember the locator is that lowercase i. So you take whatever percentile you're finding, divide by 100, and multiply by the number of data values. So that's literally 0.42 times 40. And that's actually going to give us 16.8. I got a decimal for my locator. So by the previous slide, I is a decimal, we round it up always round up even if it was 16.1 so always round up so to 17 i want the 17th data value so in my sorted data set i want the 17th data value so these are in rows of 10 so 10 11 12 13 14 15 16 17 the 17th data value aka the 42nd percentile piece of 42 that's the notation for it, is 143. <clears throat> Let's try another one. The 25th percentile. 25 divided by 100 times 40. So that's 0 0.25 times 40. Or 10. Please beware. This does not mean you want the 10th data value as, as logical as that may seem. That's not going to quite be enough to be your 25th percentile because remember the 21st percentile needs a quarter of the data below it. So 10 data values below it. So instead you have to find the average of the 10th and the 11th data value. You have to find the average of the sorted data set, the 10th and the 11th, 130 plus 133. So P sub 25, the 25th percentile, will be 130 plus 133 divided by 2. Average the two numbers. That will actually give you 263 over 2, which is actually 131.5. So that is your 25th percentile. 25% of the data values, or 10 data values, will be less than or equal to 131.5. What about the other way around? What about I give you a data value, you tell me what its percentile is. Like when you used to take a standardized test or something, it'd be like, you were in the 60th percentile. Well, what did that mean? It mean you performed better than at least 60% of the other people that took the same test. So the percentile value of a data value X is number of data values less than or equal to X divided by total number of data values times 100. So I'm looking at less than or equal to. So find the percentile of a box with 145 marshmallows. So you want number of data values less than or equal to number of data values less than or equal to, I'll use the sign there, less than or equal to 145. How many data values is that? Well, that's, there's 145. There's 10 data values per row, so there's 20 data values. Because some textbooks treat a little bit differently. Like if you have three and 145s, they only count like them as halves, so 1.5. But we're gonna count them each as individual data values. So three, and then you have 17 other values, so 20. So my percentile is going to be 20 out of 40 times 100. So 0 0.5 times 100, that would be 50, that would be the 50th percentile. There's 50% of the data values that are less than or equal to 145. So like I said, that's different books have different definitions, but that's the one we'll use. Anyway, thanks for watching.